Hey guys, Capper here, and welcome to part two of this Trespasser Saga. I'm going to lay it out to you as it happened, without the benefit of hindsight, because we didn't have the benefit of hindsight. Nobody ever does, you know, when you're in a situation. So this way you can just kind of experience what it was like at the moment without having any more information, and then at the end I'll kind of lay out what maybe did or didn't happen. Um, and then after this one, there's going to be a part three of putting the Branson in action on removing the vehicle that you're going to see here in part two. So let's check it out. Thanks. Okay, I just got home and I have a trespasser on our property. It's a silver car parked on our pond dam the sheriff's on the way we just removed a trespasser yesterday don't know if it's related to him or what man this just pisses me off i'm tempted to strap one on and freaking go out there and make contact but i'll wait for the deputy i don't believe he could tell he could barely see it with the binoculars this is just unbelievable I'm, I'm waiting here for the sheriff's deputy because I don't they ain't getting away uh, I, and I don't know the situation um, when he gets here I'm gonna I'm gonna see if I can run home and grab a pistol and because uh, he could come off of that pond dam in two directions uh, the one where we're looking at and then he'd be out in this field and then the other one where he went on it was behind the house he probably ruined our back lawn no doubt about that but i mean i can't believe this car got back there to begin with with the ground as crazy as it is so i'm definitely on high alert it's one of them times where i gotta go grab a piece for whatever reason i don't have one with me so hopefully the deputy will be here soon. It's the same guy coming that removed the trespasser uh, yesterday. The deputy just arrived. You know, where hopefully it ain't something really sinister. You know, you never know if it's an ambush. And uh, he's going to make an approach to that car. It could be a stolen car. It could be tweakers. You just never know. Okay, are you prepared? Um, this is one of my many action plans. This is in close reach, close proximity. Got dual magazines on it. I got a radio to hear, hear and or talk. And I could listen to all the police communications on it. So just something to think about. Especially when you're living way out in the sticks, because um, you need to protect yourself. Just FYI when you're living out in the sticks. Okay, so the deputy wanted to approach it alone. I'm starting to get to know this guy. He's a good guy. And the car is over there. Definitely wasn't there. Probably stolen. Definitely been in a wreck. He told me just to keep, a, keep an eye out for him. So I have some backup. Right there, ready to go. And we'll see how this plays out. All right, yeah, that was totally my bad. I forgot to tell him about the boat channel. But honestly, I'm kind of glad because the uh, his backup just arrived. So uh, I don't know if they're going to come in here and watch with me or go around the other way. I just can't believe this stuff. Two days in a row. Unreal. And we've been here three years, three years, and not had one problem in two days in a row.
Wouldn't be surprised if that car is smashed there from hitting trees on that pond dam because it is very, very narrow on there. Those of you guys that follow the channel know that. Um, I should have grabbed my scanner. Let me go get it. That's the same guy that was here yesterday. Well, that makes sense why I only saw one track. Oh my gosh. Seriously, it's the same guy from yesterday. That car was not there last night and wasn't there this morning. Okay, so I'm now taking a walk. The neighbors just saw a guy walk across the field onto our property, okay? Just in case, I called the sheriff, I let them know that there's somebody out here now and their cars are all tied up. So I'm just going to take a walk. I know approximately where they saw him. My guess is they might be coming back for this car. But let's see okay so I stayed at this spot for about five or ten minutes and just looked and watched I, forgot I could see the there. open field and then I could see where the car is and I could see some of the brush in between so I just waited this for just a little while before I continued Okay, so I did a really slow and quiet creep throughout this thing and I was looking back and forth so I don't want to fast forward it so I'll just kind of put pieces in here but this was when I was approaching the car. sure he's not sitting in here. Nice, huh? How'd you like to wake up to that parked on your property? On your pond dam? Okay, I started working my way around the property in the areas where I thought somebody, you know, untrained or unfamiliar might go, keeping an eye on the deer towers for any type of movement or sound. And uh, this next piece that I'm going in, because I know the woods very well, is a deer bedding area. So I was paying attention thinking, I'm like, I should be kicking deer up by now, even though I was really creeping and it was wet ground. And then sure enough, another two steps and two deer jumped out. Um, so what that tells me is there was nobody through that area. If them deer were still bedded down in the, these woods, nobody had come through there. That's just a tip for you guys, tracking, um, especially when you know your own property. And then in a situation like this, when you come to an opening, don't just walk out into the opening take your time scan left and right and back and forth another thing to keep in mind here is tactically it's unlikely someone's gonna have a long gun so even if somebody did have a handgun 
anything past 20 yards, especially in a dynamic situation, it is almost impossible that somebody could hit with a handgun. I mean, I know this from my experience and especially in a stressful situation. So if it was somebody untrained and they did have a handgun, they're, the chances of getting hit are very low as long as you're scanning you know at least 30 yards in front of you so here I was looking for fresh footprints um, at this particular crossing because people are creatures of habit so under stress they are going to take the easiest routes which most likely are going to be trails that are there and I have a lot of trails so I'm keeping an eye out for um, fresh footprints and such so here I'm sitting here looking at this ground blind trying to assess if somebody's in there so when I mean people are creatures of habit I'm just sitting here behind cover really looking for any kind of movement because if there's somebody in there they are gonna wanna see what's going on on the outside and I saw just a tiny bit of movement here in one of the windows that's why I'm waiting a while okay so after probably at least five minutes or more I didn't see any movement besides that one small one I didn't hear any footsteps in there and keep in mind again I'm well out of handgun range here unless it's a really trained individual here so after waiting like 10 minutes I decided to approach this hey, if you're in there come on out just want to talk. you're here to get your car let's get it done get your car out of here I saw a movement over there and it was this, just a little bit, just like that. Okay, then I uh, ended up going back to this wood tower on the edge of my bean field. I cleared it in much the same way. I sat there and watched it. I moved a little, watched it, watched it, watched it. So I felt nobody was in there. So I got in here, figured I'd watch till almost dark here. And I decided, well, I'm probably better off just uh, staying by the house and keeping an eye on the car there for the evening. So in hindsight, after putting all the pieces together, um, we figured there may not have even been anybody here at all because it was the neighbors, um, one of the kids that said they saw somebody cross in the field. And again, the information I had at the time, well, after going back and talking some more, he said he saw a person with a white top on and when I went in here let's as a matter of fact let me show you this area again I bumped some deer which told me there was probably nobody in there so when you see the white tails of these deer what could that look like to a kid across the field there's a couple more deer are a heck of a good helper if you're looking for someone on your property at least we'll tell you where they haven't been and if you see deer running somewhere else where you're not something could be making them run just FYI okay and be sure you stay tuned for part three when I put the Branson to work here pulling the car out see if I can make it uphill on this bean field which is all sloppy and muddy and as far as the car being there, we figured it probably was there the day before, but it was all snow covered. Everything was snow when they picked the guy up and it all melted instantly. 
and please like the video if you enjoyed it and share it with your friends if anyone might enjoy it we appreciate it and subscribe to uh, follow the country living action of living the dream so thanks a lot we'll see you on the next go around